All y'all ready? Welcome to Whiskey Ball. We're doing another whiskey. <laughs> Shocker. Well, this one's from Magnificent whiskey. Bastard, Frank Monatello. Frank Monatello, you Magnificent Bastard. You know what? I love me some Penelope. Penelope is the best. Yep. Um, I've told you my wife's pet name. It's Penelope. Yeah. 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 Come to me, Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible, though, doesn't it? She asked for a nickname. Yeah, Penelope. And she very quickly regretted it. <laughs> like, everybody you know I has a nickname. Name. Love pet name. Everybody you know has a nickname. Give me a nickname. Yes, Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is interesting. So this goes back to... Her name's not Penelope. Either. What happens when you uh, are knownly sort of just source whiskey and blend it, mm -hmm. and that's your thing. Sure. This whiskey has been getting accolades all over the place. It's yeah. becoming sought after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a brand of a couple of guys, I think from Jersey. I'm not entirely sure, mm -hmm. but they're sourcing from various places. Uh, uh -huh. This is MGP, but it's four grain straight bourbon whiskey. And that's not because they got MGP to make them a four grain. Yeah. It's because they took various mash bills of MGP bourbon yeah. and blended them together. Interesting. So Okay, so the MGP, that makes sense because one of the things is the telltale sign. There's that orange quality, but this is a little different because it's kind of a soft, nutmeggy orange. Hang on. Uh, that's what you gotta do. Do that. I can't I Here. I try. That does not help. Let me get in there. A little Heimlich? Yeah, no, 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 no. That's actually painful. Can we grind it from the back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get this, buddy. <laughs> uh, you know what you should do? Burp. Uh, All right, see if you can get the north. I agree. Get the, 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 okay. the orange in there. Soft, n slightly dusted nutmeggy orange. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's the orange in a potpourri basket where you get the dried orange slice mm -hmm. that's like actually dried mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Yeah, dried Indeed. orange in potpourri. That is nice. It I mean, does smell nice. So they blended some MGPs, some mm -hmm. mash bills, which is cool because while there is that recognizable element of the orange, which is a, you right. know, as far as we're concerned, a telltale sign of MGP, um, this isn't in and of itself obviously an MGP release. Right. There's that note. Slightly off the path. Yeah, there's that note, but it comes across as a little bit softer, a little bit of a dusting of a nutmeg, and maybe a little... Okay. I felt that way about our Eleanor's, which is like the Texas heat hmm? took it off of the tried and true. Yeah, cooked it up. Yeah. yeah. One other thing, I'll tell you something I like about these guys in a second, yeah. but let's drink it first. Uh, this is cloudy, so they went below 46. They did. It's 80 proof, 40%. Smells more than you would think for 80%. Okay, it's kind of thin. And that's the, the palate is when it just becomes a slightly spiced orange slice. So here's where I want to make sure that we're being fair. Mm. Because we're so familiar with the MGP right. at the higher proofs. I'm looking at the price on this. This, it's thin compared to a lot of the cask stuff that right. we've had. But I'm thinking as much as I can imagine this in a vacuum without previous experiences, it's not like there's no body or character or depth. It's just we've had these flavors cranked up a yep. lot higher. This isn't watery. No, no, like, no. There's it's a, not thin. There's plenty there. There's plenty there to, to find. And I would say 30 bucks, 30 to 35 bucks. No, it's a great deal. I would say uh, for the proof, there's damn near a, a lot of flavor in there. Yeah. For the proof, 80 proof. And I like the way the flavors present. This isn't like a classic Kentucky wood mm -hmm. cherry combo. This is a little bit more yeah. herbal, a little bit more honeyed, yeah. a little bit more citrus, and a little spicy. Now, if you were to ask me, would I like these flavors at a higher proof? I would say yeah, obviously yes. Okay. But what is surprising again, at that 40% ABV, mm -hmm. there's a lot to find. Yeah. I just think there could be more to find at a higher proof. Yeah. It does land with a little bit of a, a barrel bitter note. Yeah, the aftertaste, a mm -hmm. little bit barrel heavy. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that bitter, which isn't bad. It's not bad. And you say these guys are getting a lot of penelope love? This is batch two, by the way, mm -hmm. if you were doing the math. Four grain straight bourbon, whiskey, batch two. So the people who, like, give me some context here. The people that are giving- Oh, here's what's cool. Penelope love. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just whiskey people because uh, they like what they're blending. And yeah. this goes back to the conversation of no one ever really cared about sourcing. What they cared about was lying. Transparency, yeah. Yeah. So as soon as people are starting to be very blatant about what was going on, mm -hmm. but create a good whiskey, mm -hmm. then it's less of a drama, yeah. right? One of the cool things, if you go to their About Us page, 
it lists their staff. Yeah. And there's, you know, the, the staff photos as you scroll down. Mm -hmm. You get to the bottom, and two is MGP and Bardstown. <laughs> <laughs> they're very, I was like, that is that's pretty cool. <laughs> very, very productive members of the team. Yeah. <laughs> At least until recently, whenever you, you couldn't yeah. get, your, get your hands on a barrel MGP. David Jones. Is that like Davy Jones's locker? Yeah, it's Jones? his locker. Okay. Yeah, but that's when his mother's calling him. David. David Jones. David Jones. Yeah. Is it just me or have these episodes felt like a social experiment to see how much non whiskey content we are willing to thumbs up? Oh, yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. And then after we that, you probably. Put, the answer is more, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Gary F. Uh, Rex Williams Whiskey Babingus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Sure, sure. The, yeah. Babingus. the Babingus. What would the graphic be for a Babingus? It wouldn't be a font treatment. It would have to be a graphic. Uh, so, this is, I want you to close your eyes. And oh, in your, no. Hold on. In your okay. mind's eye, whenever I say the word penelope, what comes to mind? <laughs> Describe it in explicit detail. Uh, <laughs> a penelope yes. is a small porcelain pony uh, with horns like an antelope. What shape are the horns? Uh, Curly, like like those certain kind of African. And then the end of the horns, what is? Pointy. On the, is it more of like a rounded curve? Or no, no, it's pointy. How is that a penal? It's like a jackalope. <laughs> it's a small pony and an antelope mixed together. Fine, that's the babingus. <laughs> With a hidden in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think in terms of a uh, you know a little bit of a an experiment in what blending yeah. very common, very familiar whiskeys can do. It can, it's something new. It's recognizable with some of the bigger, more familiar elements in MGP. What this tells but us it turns into something new. Is that MGP makes good whiskey, which we keep saying. Yeah. And that they're very good at blending it. Yeah, well, they, they blended it well. Yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing your drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. With us.